good day God's people it's a beautiful day over here uh, and I believe you and yours are having a wonderful time with God hallelujah all right uh, briefly I just want to speak to us on three kinds of spiritual knowledge please take note of that three kinds of spiritual knowledge uh, and the intent of speaking on this is to help us to assume the fullness of knowledge in Christ uh, and uh, and to it will help our study life so strongly it will help us to ap apply our uh, wisdom appropriately all right because knowledge the word the word translated knowledge in the scriptures uh, it's they are multifaceted words translated into just mere knowledge or use the word perceived okay in the scriptures and uh, the English sense has really, really, really damped so many understanding of many scriptures that uh, I believe it's one of the reasons we're not seeing the fullness of, uh, of the wisdom of God. So the reason is of this broadcast, all right, uh, of this video is to shortly, within 10 minutes or you're about, to expound to you the three kinds of spiritual knowledge, all right, and, uh, and then you should actually have the right quest in your uh, the proper quest in your pursuit of God okay until you attain the fullness of knowledge you shouldn't stop because eternal life is in knowledge don't forget scripture says in John 17 verse 3 it says this is life eternal this is eternal life that they might know you the one and only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent that they might know you the one and only true God and Jesus Christ whom you said all right the word there is genosco not even epignosis not even either you get so you get to understand why certain choice words are used in the Hebrew context to denote certain kind of realities. I believe uh, this is part of the reason why God chose the Greek and the Hebrew language. They are quite expository, all right? You know, ancient civilizations began from there. English seems to have the highest form of words in our day and time. Why? Because civilization has thrived the most on the English language. So also in ancient times, civilization thrived the most among the Greeks. All right, so you hear Greek scholars right now. We have more of English scholars, isn't it? For those days, the English scholars were the Aristotle. Come on, mention them. All right, uh, Gamaliel. Those are the people, the Greek scholars were at the top of the game. So most of most contextual scriptures were written in reference to them. The Roman kingdom spoke Greeks. You know, don't forget the Grecian kingdom was the world power before the Roman emperor. So all those civilizations came with that. Okay. Uh, just that's just by the way okay uh, to start with it's good you know that the, 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 the scriptures principally is written in two languages about three even four okay but two principal languages the Hebrew language and the Greek language okay the Hebrew and the Greek the Hebrew is the uh, original language of the Jews okay the Greek came with civilization it's just like now we are Yoruba isn't it but right now majority of everybody in our in our location speaks english in fact it's like they they just believe you are not educated if you can't speak english language right that is exactly the same thing in the day uh, around the new testament region i told you the greeks have taken over right civilization was in greeks was magically um, mostly among the greeks okay that's why the scripture says the greeks seeks after wisdom the jews seeks after science so the greek language was the generally spoken language so majority of the new testaments were written in greek they were written in greek okay so and the choice words used all right choice words used to this uh, to denote context in the scriptures uh, uh are very very primary in fact they are distinct they are intentional okay in order to convey a kind of knowledge a kind of understanding okay all right, so uh, I, I, so since we're talking about knowledge here, we're talking about civilization, so that's why I just said to focus on three kinds of knowledge. Kinds of knowledge, okay? The knowledge of God and the knowledge of uh, our faith. All right, so you need to understand certain places. So that as for when you study, all right, it will be wisdom for you to just check in context which word was used as knowledge in that context. So that you know what to expect. Did you get that? You know what to expect, all right? Because if... A knowledge that was used in the context was supposed to be a, a revealed knowledge and you are experienced you are thinking it you are thinking about it as an experienced knowledge or or an indicative knowledge okay 
you might miss the context. All right, three kinds of knowledge, three Greek words. Okay, principally, all right, the word gnosis, the Greek word gnosis, gnosis, G, all right, G N O S I S, gnosis, the G is silence, all right, is the general word for knowledge, okay? All right, uh, the, I discover the, the church is so familiar with this first kind of knowledge which I am going to mention to us, but there's so much more to that which is epignosis. Now, I'm talking about the spirit now. Gnosis is general language or knowledge of mathematics, English, right? General language, the word gnosis. But there's what called epignosis. Epignosis is the first spiritual kind of, the word denotes as in the, the spiritual knowledge. Now, you know, don't forget I'm talking about spiritual knowledge, not just general knowledge. Okay, that's why I'm not touching about gnosis. Now, but the first kind of spiritual knowledge that was mentioned in the Bible that the scriptures speak about is epignosis. And epignosis means revealed knowledge. Revealed knowledge, okay? Knowledge that is revealed. It simply means it is hidden all along, okay? It is hidden and it takes a spirit flux, a spirit force. It takes the Holy Ghost for it to be revealed. It simply means it can even be a knowledge that can be before you and yet hidden, okay? So it, it has to be revealed. That's where revelational knowledge comes from. This is the most celebrated kind of knowledge in the body of Christ. But there's one which I really, really, in my, I trust the Lord to bring to our understanding today. It is the words, the famous words used in the, uh, the Pauline prayer, like we call it. Okay? Say, ever since I heard of your faith in Christ, I have not ceased to make mention of you in my prayers, right? Quickly, let's check Ephesians 1, 15. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. Paul says, Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and the love unto the saints, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. He said that the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge, revelation in the epignosis of him. All right, the apocalypse of his epignosis. All right, the epignosis means the revealed knowledge, the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being open, being enlightened, that he may be able to know, genosco, all right, that he may be able to know what is the hope of his calling. I want to take that again. Verse 16, see, I cease not to make mention of you in my prayers. Okay, I cease not to make mention of you in my prayers. I'm taking the, sorry, verse 7. I cease not to make mention of you in my prayers, giving thanks unto you. Giving thanks for you, making mention of you, that the God, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that He may be able to know what is the hope of His calling. All right, actually, the word know there is oida, which means indicative knowledge. Don't worry, I will just, I may be able to know what is the hope of His calling, and what is the riches of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us who we believe. All right. So your revealed knowledge, as much as, as as much as have been revealed to you in Christ, all right, determines these three things that I mentioned there. It says what that you may be able to know what is the hope of your calling, all right, the hope of your calling, the riches of his inheritance in the saints, and the exceeding greatness of his power to you, all right. So revealed knowledge is very very important. It helps you to have a good grasp of context in the scriptures. It is revealed. There will no be room for assumptions, right? So it talks about the intellectual, your eyes of your understanding, being understanding principally, okay? The second kind of knowledge, don't forget the first kind of knowledge is epignosis, spiritual knowledge, don't forget. Epignosis. I'm staying with the Greek context. In Hebrew, all right, they just have two, two words, yada and the heart, right? Yada and that. Let's, let's stay with the Greek. Greek is more expository, as you can see. They have three words for knowledge. The Hebrew is just with two, all right? So, in the case of spiritual knowledge in the, right, the New Testament, now, the first is a big gnosis, right? The revealed knowledge of God, isn't it? The revealed knowledge of God, right? The revealed, that means it opens up scriptures to you. It gives you understanding to know why things are the way they are, right? That's the first. All right, the second is oida. Or they call it aido, you know, oida. O-I-D-O, okay? Some still spell it high O D O, right? All right, forget it. Just understand. You don't have to cram those things. Just understand. I'm much more after your understanding. Oida is 
basically kind of visionary knowledge indicative knowledge it's a different thing all right it is a different thing for me to see this thing let's say i've been talking about tab i've been talking about a phone and there is a phone when you see it it has screens that is revealed knowledge in your consciousness you are imagining how it looks like oh then all of a sudden your hypnosis deals with your imaginations and then but a time will come whereby you can speak about the angels their functionality then a time will come whereby you have visionary encounters so you need to understand when scripture is saying to have visionary encounters so our hypnosis should lead to oida did you see that it says that he may be able to oida it says ever since i heard of your faith i have not ceased to make mention of you in my prayers that the god and the father of our lord Jesus may give you the spirit of wisdom that's right application of this knowledge and revelation in the knowledge of him in the epignosis of him that the eyes of your understanding may be what enlightened be open that you may be able to order to know to see it's a kind of seeing knowledge all right it's a different if i say there's a tab it's it it, it has a pink pouch all right and, and the screen is white so just in your mind so when you go to social place you be there, in your imaginations you create it right all right so you just think about that and then okay so that is how it is oh they will teach about in new jerusalem you begin to imagine all the gates but there's a place for encounters whereby you begin to have visionary encounters that is oida all visions are classified into oida you need to understand when scripture is saying this kind of thing you need to see it so when you read and scripture points to oida in a place that means it's calling into sight it's calling you to sight it's calling you to proper perception of that thing literal perception of that thing sometimes they use genosco intermittently with oida because you see the difference between oida and genosco which is the third kind of knowledge is experiential knowledge because you can see certain things and yet not touch them i can see this stuff and yet it's in a distance from me and yet i cannot experience it <laughs> you say that you may be able to oida that you may be able to see so the first kind of knowledge a revealed knowledge so when you begin to understand the context of christ then the seen knowledge and then the thought is the experiential knowledge let me use the literal so if you don't have to cram all these scriptures on your head but i'm calling them by name so that I should in case you want to go deeper into these things okay the first is what epignos is revealed knowledge it is revealed to you oh that thing there's this how it works this side works this side works right and, and then it creates a consciousness in you that oh suddenly this is how this works this is how this works right so it is a revealed knowledge your eyes is open to see it but all that is seen, you see it. You hold, lay hold of it. All right, so you see then the last part of it is to lay hold of it. Experience kind of knowledge. That's why you should wonder. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 4, right, verse 1. It says, and Adam knew his wife and they begat Cain. So which kind of knowing is that? It's an experience kind of knowledge. Do you see that? So it's not kind of, I know so, 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 place. I know so, so, it's not mental kind of knowledge. It's talking about experiential knowledge. Did you get that? So many of us, we, we are, can't you see that there will be big problem in the body of Christ when we perceive a thing instead of us experience a thing. We never know that God called us to experience that thing. So there's a, that's what Paul was saying. He said that I might know you and the power of your resurrection. He said that I might, that word was genosco. That's a third kind of knowledge. The second is oida. The first is epignosis. The second is oida. The third is genosco. Genosco, he said that I might know you, that I might genosco you. And the power of your resurrection did you see that he says so i can literally experience the power of his resurrection hmm. jesus i can actually experience the power of his resurrection i can experience the power of his resurrection the third kind of knowledge that is interactive that is koinonia that is fellowship so do not just only seek after revelation and knowledge go into sin knowledge. that's what john was saying in first john chapter one let me read it to you you need to see he was talking about the entire three classes of knowledge in a singular verse in a singular context look at what he said first john chapter one from verse one first john one one said that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes wait a minute we heard it 
that is epignosis. We heard it. It was revealed to us. Then it went further to being seen. You see, we have seen with our eyes. This is John talking about this thing. He's interpreting this three kind of knowledge in a singular verse. Which we have seen with our own eyes. Which we have looked upon. <laughs> that our hands have handled experience concerning the world of what? Life. So you see, the three kinds of knowledge is to bring you to the to life. To life. Eternal life is ordained to be not just only revealed, perceived, it is ordained to be experienced. Oh my God. That will be in the next broadcast. So you see, he is talking about so many things in this same context. Sin, he said, which you have heard, it was revealed. Oh, did you hear that uh, 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 there was a protest <laughs> in Lagos and there was shootings and general killings? So you heard it, you create imagination. Oh my God, it was revealed. So this thing is true. Then you go in there and you see it. Then may you not experience it. <laughs> did you see that? You saw it perhaps in the distance. Or when the video came out, you heard in the first place, it was revealed. That, and then you don't saw the video, you, do, you heard that. And then experiences that you are in the same high witness. And then you partook of the whole turmoil. Did you see that? These are three kinds of knowledge. Look at what he said. That which you have heard from the beginning, which you have heard, which you have seen, which our eyes have looked upon, that our hands have handled. I want you to know that every revelation in Christ is supposed to go through these three gates of knowledge with you. Never stop at any junction. Don't stop at the revealed part. Neither should you stop at just the same part whereby encounters with you. You must come whereby you become those things. All anything that you see, you know, the Bible says we've been, it says as we behold as in an unveiled glass, we have been transformed. So you see, the ideal, the principal intention of God behind every revealed knowledge is to become, is to experience. So Paul, Paul, the writer of more than half of the entire New Testament, is saying that I may know you, that I may experience you, that I may genosco you and the power. You are the one that have written the most on this resurrection power. And yet you're not saying that I may know. He's not talking that I may genosco, not just only to be revealed, because he has the revealed knowledge. He knows. He's not saying that I may know you and the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering. Hallelujah. I think I will stop there. So you know the three kinds of knowledge. I pray that as many of you that are yet to even see the revelation of knowledge, all you just know is the letters, the gnosis. You just have, you read the Bible as though you are reading English, or a novel, or you read the Bible as though you are reading a magazine, or newspaper. So revelation of knowledge is not the, I pray that the epignosis of God be given to you, that revelations will be coming to you. Now, and as many of you that are in the states of revelations, whereby you, you have revealed knowledge, I pray that you begin to see them, that you begin to look upon them, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let your eyes be open. That the next layer of spiritual knowledge be opened unto you. And the last layer, I pray that ultimately that you all. I pray that you all experience the life in God. Experience. It's not just enough for you to have the revelation and knowledge that God is Jehovah Jireh. There's a place whereby you see it and then you experience it. And then your confidence come. And then you just know there's a God that provides. If you are not confident in any doctrine of Christ, you have not yet experienced it. You can say it's Jehovah Rapha, it's the Lord who heals. You know it. In fact, you can preach on the healing, and yet you can't experience it. That means you still have a long way to go in knowledge. So there's a place for experiencing the knowledge of his healing. Look at Paul speaking here. And the utmost, utmost revelation of knowledge which you should have, I mean, the, the, is the genosco, all right? The genosco, whatever you want. You not just only perceive, interactive perception. That's, what the, that's the meaning of genosco, interactive perception. Experienced perception experienced perception it's also it will, be, it will shock you that uh, in fact uh, there are contexts I expect them to use the word uh, and Jesus perceiving their thoughts I, I think they'll just say Jesus ordering their thoughts you know permits me to use the word ordering their thoughts and yet you see them say Jesus genus calling their thoughts so Jesus was experiencing people's thoughts so at that particular point what that means is that Jesus was not actually just perceiving it, he was seeing their thoughts as living beings. <laughs> so you see, you hear Jesus cry when there's unbelief. You see him lament. You see him coming to because he was experienced spiritual forces. That's why Paul came to a place, say, whether in the flesh or in the spirit, I cannot tell, but God knows. So there are experiences you have in God whereby you can experience them deeply, and you can they, they no longer become fictitious to you, they are life. 
Angels no longer become a perceived knowledge or revealed knowledge whereby you have and you can say so much. But you, 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 you have experienced that. This is the ultimate kind of knowledge the Lord seeks to bring us all into. I pray that the eyes of your understanding be open. That you not just only either to see, but much more you will denote or you will experience in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you, cause his face to shine on you, teach you the ways of eternal life, and prosper in you in Jesus' name. And amen. Shalom to you. Bye-bye.